guess I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, Everybody, it is Thursday at and it's 8:30. Yep, 8:30. <laughs> it is the 30th of July, so today's the last day in July. I cannot believe that July went by so fast. Did it go by fast for you, sir? Very fast. Yes, I like blinked and July was over, and we're almost into August. But that's awesome. The Lord is doing so much, and so it's so exciting to be a part of His kingdom and to be here with all of you guys. Um, if you haven't already and you're tuned in, go ahead and share this broadcast so that everyone can see it. Um, we are coming to you live from WUCC 99.9 FM. We are live and on the air. Um, we are also live on Facebook, so go ahead and share that. And afterwards, we will be uploaded to YouTube. So we have an Instagram account, and it's the same as our Facebook. It's peculiarpeople.cast. Um, YouTube, it's Studio WUCC 99.9 FM. And if your friend doesn't have Facebook, but they need to hear this live, they can tune in at www.cwchrist.com and it's live streamed. Um, our email is peculiarpeople999 at gmail.com. And I really want you guys to reach out um, and share your testimony if you feel led to do that. If you want to be on the program, go ahead and email me, text me, message me, whatever. Um, we're going to be starting a question and answer session soon. So if you go ahead and send in your questions, if it's something that you're having trouble biblically looking at or just something you've been confused about, we want to hear your questions and then we'll answer them in the next show or whenever after we've had time to pray about it and prepare as the Lord gives us the utterance. Um, so I'm super excited about that. That was a recommendation from Mr. Ed who was on the show a couple weeks ago and I just think it's a great idea. So uh, email us your questions at peculiarpeople999 at gmail.com or you can text me uh, if you know Seth, I'm sure you can text him if you have his number. Seth said no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you can always DM us on Instagram or private message us on Facebook. Either one and we'll get back to you and we'll let you know when we're going to answer your questions. So you can tune in and share. Awesome, guys. So I see all you watching. Oh, Alvita said it's your, her birth month. Happy birthday, Alvita. We love you. Um, I'm trying to get better about looking at Facebook, but um, I get so distracted I can't possibly look at Facebook and talk at the same time. So we're going to do the disclaimer and then we'll get started. The opinions and views expressed by anyone on this show are not necessarily the views and opinions of the owners, partners, or sponsors of WCC 99.9 radio station. So if you have a problem with something Seth or I say or any of our special guests, take it up with us directly, but first go to God. All right. Hallelujah. So, how was your week, Seth? My week was, it was a week. It had a lot of thinking to do. I love thinking. Processing through a lot of revelation. and. Oh, yes. Stuff. Awesome. I'm so glad you brought up revelation because uh, I've been getting a lot of revelation this week. And it's been so just crazy 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 um and so i wanted to share a little bit of the revelation i just got today and it's about seeds 
And I'm going to be reading from this book called Driven by Eternity. Um, it's super good. I suggest everyone get it and read it. Um, this is my friend's copy. I just finally finished it, so I'm going to return it to them. And I'm also going to buy my own copy for my own home library so I can read through again and just really get into it because it's super good. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, but the revelation I got was on seeds, so I don't know if you guys have seen it, but around the south carolina area seeds have been mailed mysteriously mailed to people and um the clemson agricultural people are saying like don't plant these seeds we don't know who sent them um and when i was reading some from this book today we were they, we were reading about seeds and so i'm just going to read it and then tell you what god told me so from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And that's the NIV version. And uh, John, the author, goes on to say, Our multiplied harvest will be in direct proportion to how much we sow. Notice that sowing is not as God decides, but according to what we decide to give. If we purpose in faith to love to be generous, then our giving is greatly multiplied. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. 2 Corinthians 9, 10. And he, John goes on to say, The Lord will increase our store of seed, similar to the example of the apple seed just given. If we sow what we have, we will get many more seeds. And when I read that, I couldn't help but think about these people who are getting these seeds in the mail. Like, I haven't got seeds in the mail, probably because I don't plant a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, I'm not saying go plant those seeds or that those <laughs> seeds are from God, and that's my revelation. But I'm saying that is... A, like a physical picture of what Christ does for us. He gives us more seeds after we plant the seeds we already have. So I'm going to continue reading and I'll repeat that sentence. The process continues until we find in our position a storehouse of seeds, giving us greater ability to bless others. And so when I read that, I, I thought about those seeds and I was like, a storehouse of seeds. That is in the spirit what God wants us to have, not just those little baggies of seeds but we've got to start with those little baggies of seeds and then he, when we plant those he's going to give us a storehouse so that is kind of the revelation that i got um, john goes on to say through our giving god will also enlarge the harvest of our righteousness this is where it gets very exciting. This speaks of increasing our harvest of eternal rewards from the lives we've touched through our giving. So in essence, we are multiplying our reward just like the men in the parable. And he's talking about the men, um, the servants who were given this and then one increased it tenfold, one increased it five and one didn't at all. Mm -hmm. And so when I read that and I was reminded of the seeds that people have been getting all around, God said to me, that's what I want to do. I want to drop seeds in your mailbox after you've already planted the seeds that I've given you. And I was like, wow, God, that's incredible. I can't wait to share that. So yeah, that was some of my revelation today. And it's so interesting because I was asking the Lord yesterday what he wanted me to say like i know we're going to go into hosea and we're going to finish that up but i didn't expect that to take the whole hour mm -hmm. and i was like god i know you have something specific you want to say to the listeners so what is it and at the time that i was asking the lord that i was listening to my pastor's broadcast from wednesday night and um jeremiah johnson who's a, a well-known prophet he was we were watching one of his videos and while we were watching it, my pastor said, oh, 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 and he got a revelation from the Lord. And it reminded me of last week when you were reading and I was like, oh, 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 mm -hmm. and I got my revelation. And God said, I just want you to tell them about how you get revelation. And so 
everybody gets a different. Seth was sharing today that when he naps, he gets dreams from the Lord. Well, that doesn't happen for me, even though I nap all the time. So there's plenty of opportunity <laughs> for the Lord to give me revelation. It often happens when I'm reading the word yeah. or when I'm walking in nature, but it's not about where I am or what I'm doing at the time. God revealed to me that it's about the position of my heart and listening versus hearing. So we all hear the voice of the Lord. Um, it says that my sheep know my name and they know my voice and another voice they won't follow. And so we all hear him all the time. But are you listening for him? So like intentionally setting aside time to say, here you go, Lord, speak to me, whatever you have for me to hear. I want to hear you intentionally mm -hmm. because we don't all listen, but we all hear. So we're hearing stuff all the time, whether it's white noise, background noise, but listening is this intentional action that we take. Just like you can look at the words all day long, but reading is an intentional action that you have to force yourself to do. Well, listening is just like that. And Father told me he wants us to listen to him, not just hear his voice, but listen intentionally for what he has to say, and he will give us the revelation after that. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. I thought so too. Um, and so I was just in awe of what the Lord was doing and what he was saying when I stopped and intentionally listened to him. So I, I encourage all of you guys, don't just hear the voice of the Lord, but listen to him. Set aside time to hear him speak and be intentional with your time with him because it's so important now more than ever that we listen with our whole being that we don't have any distractions cut your phone off you know if you need a little bit of worship music okay that's fine but don't be singing the music because mm -hmm. you have to listen you have to be quiet to listen which is what i struggle with obviously <laughs> because i do like to talk and sometimes god's just like Shh. and i'm like okay i'm listening i'm listening so yeah Super fun stuff. Revelation, we think, is for prophetic voices only, but it's not. In Revelation, God wants to reveal stuff to us every single day, whether it's in his word or in a song or just him speaking to us directly. And so we have to be intentional with our listening, with our reading. We have to be intentional with our minds. We don't just want to float through the day and be like, oh, wow, I didn't do anything today. So be intentional with everything you do. Great. Anything to add? Um, It's just... And what you said was, it's just dwelling in the secret place with your father. Mm, yeah. And whenever I think about that, I always think about um, the throne room and walking up to the throne and just sitting down on like the side of the side of the throne mm -hmm. and just listening, just yeah. listening to everything that's around me. Yeah. And it's just, and like you said, that's like whenever I'm reading the word and whenever I'm meditating on the word and I'm just, I'm just sitting there quiet with my eyes closed, just going over the verse in my head, applying it to myself, my inner man, my life. And then if my mo my mind wanders and I, that brings my, I bring myself back to yeah. reading the verse and then yeah. it's the crystal process. Yeah. And it's not about beating yourself up or saying, oh my goodness, I just read an entire chapter and I don't know what I read. It's about having the discipline and the diligence to go back and reread it. Mm -hmm. um, I used to think that I hated reading because I would space out and I would read like five pages before I realized that I wasn't comprehending any of the words that were entering my eye gates. And so I thought I hated it. But then I had to get very intentional with reading and now I read all the time and I love it so much. And it's so easy for us to just zone out. Um, my pastor calls it the, zone, the drone zone. And you're just like locked in, you're not focused on anything. Mm -hmm. Um, that's great for sports when you're playing athletics and to be in that zone of flow. But when you're reading or when you're listening to Father or when you're in a conversation, if you zone out, you miss so much. Yeah. And so it's so important that we're intentional with the people that we sit with, that we don't have our phones out when we're hanging out with our friends or that we don't listen to someone else's conversation when someone's trying to talk to us because how are we going to minister to them if we're not paying attention mm -hmm. to them but it's even more important to do that with father and it's so easy to get distracted because he's not a physical person sitting right there yeah. you know but it is so important that we 
go back and we read if we zoned out or we say, I'm sorry, God, can you repeat that again? I do that all the time. And he does. He repeats over and over and over for me because it takes me a while to get some stuff. And that's okay. And it's not about beating yourself up. It's about being diligent and being faithful and searching and seeking him with your whole heart because that's when we find him, not when we come half-hearted to the throne and say, woe is me it's when we really come to the end of ourselves and and we're there with all we have yeah so today we're gonna read um hosea we're gonna finish it up um so while we're doing it be intentional listeners don't just have us on in the background even though you know the music may be soothing and you have 20,000 things to do be really intentional with this time with the Lord and with us because we have some revelation that we want to share um, some scriptures that he's highlighted to us and it's just it's gonna be a great time I'm super excited about it so without further ado we're gonna pick back up where we left off so last time week uh, we read from Hosea 1 to 7. We're not going to read the whole thing because that would take me 25 years. We're going to pick out verses that Father has highlighted to us. And so the first verse we're going to start at is Hosea 8, 2, and 3. And I'll go ahead and read that. Israel cries out to me, our God, we acknowledge you. Um, In the King James Version, it says, We know you, but Israel has rejected what is good. An enemy will pursue him. Okay, so I like how straight to the point God is. Uh, He doesn't beat around the bush. He's like, well, since you didn't do that, he's like, nope, you didn't do this. So this is going to happen. I love that because I'm that type of person. I don't try to beat around the bush. Um, what What Father highlighted to me about this is the difference between knowing him and knowing him. Mm -hmm. And I put the emphasis on that and we'll give you the definition of that. But it also goes back to this idea of believing, this superficial belief, like to believe on me. And then this actual belief that you have with your whole heart. And it's the same thing. And I'm going to read two definitions of believe. I've done it before, but I'll do it again. (laughs) So the first one is to consider to be true or honest, which is what most people think when Jesus says, believe on me and you will be saved. But that's not at all what he's saying. He's saying to have a firm or wholehearted religious conviction or persuasion to regard the existence of God as fact, to have firm conviction as to the goodness, efficacy, and ability of something. And so this, there's something vastly different about those two definitions. One is this like, oh, I know he's real. And the other one is with all that I am, I believe in him so much so that I'm going to serve him. And that's the same thing that we're talking about here to acknowledge God means to be like, yeah, you're God. He knows he's God. He doesn't need our validation. What he needs from us is to know him intimately. Mm -hmm. And Israel didn't do that. And because they didn't do that. Their enemy pursued them. They rejected what is good and and God is good. They rejected him and all of his blessings and all of his commandments. And so an enemy is pursuing them. So it's super important that we don't have that head knowledge of God because even demons have that. It's important that we have that heart acceptance and that transformation. And Hosea highlighted that very beautifully there. So anything you want to add, Seth? Um, Just... Like even like last week we talked about the how they had the they had their feasts and all these things that they were doing, all these superficial things that mm-hmm. they were that they were trying to get around God because they thought they were smarter than God. Right. But they were trying to circumvent him and still fall under that covenant yeah. without actually with while still pursuing pursuing Baal and the other things that they right, were trying to right. chase after. Baal. <laughs> and um is again just like in Joel, it's they want he wanted them to rend their heart, he wanted the, the inner change yeah. because the inner change brings an outward change, yeah, and it's not the other way around. That's right, that's right. When you see people doing stuff on the outside, it is supposed to be a direct reflection of what's on the inside. My daddy used to tell me all the time when someone shows you who they are, believe them because mm-hmm. actions speak louder than words, and God 
emphasizes that every time we turn around in Hosea. So be the same person everywhere you go. Yeah. And if you're not the same person everywhere you go, you maybe need to check your heart because something might not be right. And I would hate to stand before my Lord and Savior with a heart that wasn't completely towards Him and actions that didn't reflect a heart being completely towards Him. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to Hosea 8 and 6. Let me turn. Okay, so they are from Israel. This calf, a metal worker, has made it. It is not God. It will be broken in pieces, the calf of Samaria. So he's talking about the golden calf that they built for themselves to worship. And when I read that, um, it brought me back to when Seth and I talked about the statues of Jesus that people are trying to take down. And Jesus, God reminded me that those statues were built by man. They weren't built by him. And so he's going to break stuff into pieces. He's going to check our hearts for idolatry. And anything that we put before him, even if it's an image of an image, I'm using air quotes, of him, uh, maybe we have it as an idol in place of him. And so, again, just checking our hearts, making sure it's completely rendered before a father and that we're in complete repentance and that nothing stands in between us yeah. and him. Anything to add, Seth? No. Okay. Did you have a scripture? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then... Hosea 8, 11, which says, Because Ephraim has made many altars for sin, they have become for, become for him altars for sinning. Um, and my mother and I were actually talking about this, and it was the things that we put as a way to get us closer to God, mm -hmm. altars for burning incense to him, altars for offering sacrifices for him, they turn into things that we... So they're good things at first, right. but we allow them to become harmful things because yeah. we've given to sin and they become sinful. Mm -hmm. And it takes us back to the heart thing where if they're not, if it's not a true heart thing, then all of that is certain for, it's useless. There's right. no point in it. Right. When you look at an image, any kind of image or a ritual or a building and you think of it up there with God, that's an idol. Even a person like we often idolize pastors or um, people with large yeah. platforms and we cannot idolize people anymore. That is not going to sit well with God anymore. And we have to repent for that. When we cherish something in our heart more or as much as we cherish God, then it is in our way. It mm -hmm. is sinful, just like that scripture said, and it is keeping us from the Father. And I don't want anything keeping me from the Father because I desperately need Him. And I know that I have reverence for a lot of great men and women of God, but they are not God to me. And it's important that we distinguish between the two. Like, even when God sends me my husband, I'm going to be acutely aware that He is not God. Yeah. He's my husband. He's the head of the household. He's this, he's that, whatever, but he's not God. And so we have to be careful to walk that line, mm -hmm. knowing that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. And that's what we need going forward. Yeah, just like you said, like we've turned our churches into just a program yeah, and we've turned it into, we're no longer trying to listen for the voice of God and see what he wants to do in right. that service, yeah. in that church. But we've made it where we're going to follow this program for 40 days, yeah. 40. And then after that's over, then we pick a new one. Right. And that that's how we miss out on the glory of God. Yeah. We, we miss out on the Holy Spirit moving. We miss out on all this stuff right. and he can still work with that. But if it's not, if it's contrary to what he wants to do, right. then it's, it's useless to us and right. it harms us because we've put that next to him. We've compared, we've made our knowledge put it in place of his knowledge right and his wisdom yes and recently I've learned that there's a permissive will of God and then there's a perfect will of God and when you're in the permissive will of God you get some things right but you're more focused on what you want to do or what you think should happen that you miss a 
bunch of what God is trying to do. And for years, I spent time in the permissive will of God. And, you know, I was anointed and I worked in the church, but I just couldn't seem to get everything together. Well, now I finally feel like I'm walking in the perfect will of God because I figured out how to surrender. And it was just me coming as I was and not trying to figure stuff out. And walking in the perfect will of God is like every step is with him. And you don't take a step without asking him. Like I literally asked him when and where and how he wants me to grocery shop. And I know that to some people that may seem strange, but like I know that there are people, especially in grocery stores, that God wants me to talk to. And I don't want to miss it because I'm too busy looking at the radishes and the beets that I want. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the perfect will of God. And I feel in our church services, we walk a lot in the permissive will of God. Like, yeah, we're at church, but are we listening intently for what God wants to do and what God wants to say? And we have to remember that it starts with our pastor. It starts with the head and our leadership. And so if our leadership is not doing that, then how can we as believers do that? Um, but you can always find leaders who who are going to be in with God, but you got to be in with God to know if they're in with God, yeah. if that makes and sense. And this is just for an example, Smith Wigglesworth, which is a great man of faith. Yeah, God, He moved awesome. through five, I think it was five different denominations. Yeah. And he said God was moving and these denominations weren't. Yeah. And so we can't be lulled to sleep by this. We have to recognize that if right. God's not in this place, I don't want to be in this place. Right. Because what's the point of going, in going to church if you're not going to church to worship God and to learn what God has put on the pastor's, the pastor's heart? Exactly. And it's not about who you go to church with or which church you mm-hmm. go to or, or if this denomination is this. And it's not about a bunch of boxes that you need to check. It's about... is. Is God putting you there yeah. or did you just walk in there yourself? Because um, John, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm going to figure it out. Um, <laughs> who wrote Bevere. Driven by, how do you say it? I think it's Bevere. Bevere, John Bevere. Uh, he also wrote a book called Good uh, Versus God or something like that. I'm ordering that book too. Um, I started reading it and it really convicted me because a lot of the stuff in our life is good, but is it God? Did Mm -hmm. God put us in this relationship? Even if it seems great, did God put us here? Um, This church is great, but did God put you there? Because there's tons of great churches and, and tons of great pastors and tons of people preaching the word of God. But did God put you where you are? Any job is a good job, but did God put you there? And it's distinguishing between the two and knowing that where I am, I've been planted by the Father. That freedom that you get to walk in when you're in the perfect will of God is incredible. And so I'll challenge you with that. Every, a lot of things are good, but not everything is God. So really listening and discerning to know the difference is super important. Any final words on that wonderful scripture? No. Okay. So we're going to move um, to, do you have anything in chapter nine? I do actually. Okay. We're um, going to move to chapter nine. It's the second half of verse seven and it says, uh, oh, I guess the whole thing. The days of punishment have come. The days of recompense have come. Israel knows the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is insane because of the greatness of your iniquity and great enmity. And whenever I first read this, it was, it just hit me that they were so deep in their sin. Mm-hmm. They were so just, they didn't want to hear a single thing that God said that yeah. to them, the prophet was a fool yeah. and the spiritual man was insane. And I, I was like, Lord, how many times have we done this? Mm-hmm. How many times have we missed it? Because, well, God couldn't say that. Mm-hmm. God doesn't want that. Right. Yeah. We've just, we've labeled the the prophets and the people who hear the voice of God, we've labeled them as insane. Mm-hmm. And well, God doesn't talk to us like that anymore. Right. And that, oh, when people say, well, it's not like that anymore. I'm like, oh, have you read a Bible? <laughs> and, you know, I try to, to be kind and compassionate and understanding because there was a time when I thought God didn't move like that anymore. And I grew up in a church where God moved every kind of which way. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, this is, it's not for our time, but it is everything in this word is for our time or he wouldn't have given it to us. And it's so important. I was legit when I was reading through Hosea, I was like, God, can you give Seth this verse so that he can read it and we can talk about it? Cause I don't want to have too many. 
look at him providing. But it's so important. And I think we do that as a generation. We're like, mercy of God, the mercy of God, the mercy of God. And we don't want to hear warnings. And we don't want to hear scary stuff. We don't want to hear all the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. But we have to. Because every prophet that God called had this warning that followed this encouragement. We have to have both Jude it says save some with compassion but with others pulling them from the fire and so we have to have both in our ministry Um, I'm a very nice person if you can't tell (laughs) I'm very nice and I don't really like talking about hard things like what happens if you live in sin I don't like talking about that I don't ever want to talk about hell but God said, if you are going to be mine, if, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to talk about both. It's not all going to be sunshine and roses and butterflies and love. That's all important. And yes, you'll carry that. But you're going to have to carry both sides of the yeah. message. And I was like, all right, God, you got to give me strength. And somehow he's done it. And I've been able to talk about some really hard things that I've had to walk through and other people have walked through. But we've got to get this, that just because we don't like what someone says or just because we don't like what we hear or we don't like what we read doesn't mean it's not true yes god is a loving and merciful god but you only get that love and mercy if you're under the blood of jesus and if you're not under the blood of jesus then you have an eternity apart from him waiting for you and so it's really important and it's really on my heart to help you guys and to talk you through this like what it looks like to come to jesus after you've lived a life of sin or if you are saved and you're still living sin that sin is going to keep you apart from god and so you may look at me and say exactly what the israelites said to the prophets that these people are crazy because you know well if the bill fits you know Hmm. but i don't care because I don't want to not say what God has given me and then him take away my ability to speak. I just don't want that. Like he like legit did that to people in the Bible. I don't want that, (laughs) you know, but more than that, I want people to know father because when you know him and he's for you and you're for him, it's the most incredible thing in the whole wide world and my heart is so broken for people that don't grasp how deep and how wide his love is and so that's what this is all about yes we are peculiar and we're set apart but knowing that god loves us and his mercy is new every day and what knowing what he saves us from that's so important yeah and just like you said like and someone put in the comments that god is still a god of correction yes and when god corrects you and there, there will be times that it's doom and gloom, but there's always, there is always, anytime that there's prophetic words in there, like there has, this is the title, Judgment of Israel's Sin. Mm-hmm. And then the, but then there's a couple of sections later, the lo- God's love for Israel. Yeah. There's always a but and there's hope because right. God's a God of hope as well. Yeah. And God always gives us hope whenever he speaks to us. Yeah. One of the notes I wrote from the book as a whole, forgiveness and restoration is possible only for the ones who are absolutely committed to going God's way. He never leaves his people without a way back to him because God desperately wants to be with us. He loves us so much that he ripped hell wide open with his son, Jesus. He gave the most important thing to him for our lives so that we could be with him forever. And I don't want people to miss that, but we have to realize that if he did all that, if he sent his son to save us, there's something that we need to be saved from. And it's not just hell, but it's ourselves, our sinful nature, because the ways that we think are right, they really lead to destruction. And so getting under God's perfect will is what Hosea was encouraging everyone to do and that's what we're encouraging you to do today get under the perfect will of god give your life to jesus christ let him be the author and the finisher of your faith that you can walk this life out being so full with joy i have a friend who um, is just a really sad guy and it really breaks my heart that he thinks life 
is so sad and so painful. I'm like, Jesus is right here, bro, and he can make all that better. You know, he may not make your situation different, but he'll make you different. And it's the difference in our perspective that makes mm-hmm. life worth living. You know, he's not going to drop down a Lamborghini for you. <laughs> I mean, he might, he could, he might. If that's his will. <laughs> if that's what he wants to do. But it's not about when you come to God, it's not about what you have or what you don't have. It's about the fact that you have him Mm -hmm. and he's everything. Like Hosea shows us, God sustains. And that's, that's all we need when we have him. And I mean, I know from experience because I came out of a place of that. Yeah. And there's like, I just lived a very joyless life, a life that was there like, I just went with the flow and I go with the flow now, but I go with yeah. God's flow instead of my own flow. Yeah. But, and I mean, just from experience, that is an very unfulfilling place to be yeah. because just life is just not, it's not it. Yeah. It's not. And so today we want to share with you the joy that Christ brings, the joy that Hosea talks about. Yeah, this book is really hard to read and there's a lot of warnings and it's very prophetic but once you dig past that and you see the love of god that flew like was flowing through hosea to rescue gomer and the love of god that looked past the sin of the israelites and welcomed them back in like the prodigal son's father did when you see that the hope that fills you and the joy that just bubbles over is incredible and that's what i love about this book it's so redemptive Okay. I have one more. Go ahead. All right. Well, this is intense. So we're moving, moving forward. Okay. All right. Verse one, Israel empties his vine. He brings forth fruit for himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased the altars. According to the bounty of his land, they have embellished the sacred pillars. Their heart is divided. Mm -hmm. Now they are held guilty. He will break down their altars. He will ruin their sacred pillars. When I was reading this, it it showed me how god had blessed his people Mm -hmm. he had given them these great vineyards he'd given them great wealth and great prosperity Mm -hmm. but then they turned it against them they didn't think they got out of a season of needing him so the richer they got the less that they in their mind they needed him and so they just left him by the wayside and went and partied and had all these things that were just not of god right It makes me think of those um, 10 lepers that were healed, or was it 12 lepers? I don't remember. Anyway, one of them, I think Mm -hmm. it was 10, one of them said thank you, and the other, however many, they just ran off about their business. Like, they had just been healed, healed from this disease that was going to kill them, this disease that separated them from everyone. You know, you had to be banished to the outskirts of the island, or the city, wherever Mm -hmm. they were. And you couldn't be around anybody. You were going to die all alone. And Jesus healed them. And only one of them said, thank you. That's what this verse makes me think of. Um, Also, this this is chapter 10, um, verse 2. In my Bible, it says their heart is deceitful. Mm -hmm. Um, And in his, it says divided. And in the King James, it says divided. So we must not let our hearts be divided, just like we can't let the church be divided. But also, we have to realize how deceitful our flesh is and how deceitful Satan is. And we have to know that in order to fight him correctly. Because when you learn that someone is deceitful, you know what strategy Mm -hmm. to use. You use the truth because all lies come out eventually. So when you combat deceit with the truth or the word of God, or when your friend is lying to you and you know they're lying to you, you know you're about to bust them. Y'all have <laughs> seen those shows where everybody's like, what'd you do last weekend? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then they just let, you, let them lie to you and then you bust out the truth and then they're like, oh my, uh, well, uh, uh. Yes. So that's what we got to do with mm-hmm. the devil. We need to bust up the deceit. Do it in your own heart. Think about like your feelings are the most deceitful things that you have. So when you have this feeling, maybe it's anger or maybe it's attraction, AKA lust, whatever it is, and you're feeling this way, you need to be like, oh, is this a deceitful feeling or is this God? Um, God is never going to make you lust, but he will allow you to be attracted to people for various reasons. And so you need to check yourself by using your spiritual discernment. What is this feeling and how do I move past this? What truth do I fight this with? Or how do I 
lean into this without being sinful. Yeah. And that's, and self is our biggest enemy. Yeah. And that's why we have to, Paul tells us to deny self constantly daily. Every day. And, um, there's just, because our flesh is sinful, our mind, will, and emotions is sinful as well. Our yes. inner man is not sinful. It is perfect. Yeah. Our in the spirit sight of God. is good. And so there's like, it's a two against one battle and that's, right. you have to call your flesh and your mind into alignment with, um, with your spirit. And then that's when you're living in that place. But if you don't, and that's why it says, uh, be not transformed to this world, but or conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Um, and you renew your mind by reading the word of God. Yeah. But if you don't know the word of God, you can't renew your mind. Right. And you can't think on things of God. Mm -hmm. And then you, you're constantly losing the battle to your mind and will and emotions. Right. It says everything good, everything holy, everything, you know, that really long mm -hmm. verse that says basically everything of God, think on these things. Yeah. Um, and I had that memorized. I'll memorize it again. Don't <laughs> worry, friends. Uh, but when you think about not knowing the word, not so if you don't know the word you don't know god and if you don't know god you don't know love and you don't know anything pure because no person is pure no person's love is like the love of god and so if you don't know the word you don't know god and we could just keep going on and mm -hmm. on so how can you think on these things you've got to get this word and you've got to hide it in your heart and like i've memorized a lot of verses when i was younger and then in high school i really got away from that and so god has been really convicting me about memorizing verses and the references which is super hard for me but we're working on it because i want to have it in me so much yeah. so that i am the walking bible that people think i am my friends are like oh i don't need to i don't need a bible because in our youth group they used to say well what is going to happen when they take away all the bibles and everybody's like i'll just go talk to cassie <laughs> and i'm not saying that to toot my own horn back then i, I was tooting my own horn i had some pride I had to get out <laughs> but now I want to be that embodiment of Jesus where he just like popped off scripture and the right scripture at the right time, not just memorizing verses to pull them out incorrectly, but knowing the word of God so well that I can think on it all day long for others, but especially for me, because my mind, if y'all can't tell, it goes all <laughs> over the place all the time. So yeah, that was a super great verse and I'm glad you talked about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Do you have anything in between? No. All right. So we're going on to chapter 10, verse 12. And this is a call to action. Sow righteousness for yourself. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. In the King James Version, it says mercy. So unfailing mercy. And break up your unplowed or, un or fallowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and shower his righteousness on on you so that's that's like so incredible when you mm -hmm. read that and you're like yes i can do all these things and then you go to verse 13 but you have planted wickedness and you have reaped evil and you have eaten the fruit of deception i'm like oh wow just that fast he told us exactly what to do but did we do it no because that is the condition of being human that is the human condition we talked about that theme just how broken we are and so when you know that about yourself and you accept that you embrace that and you bring it to father and say god i am ashes but i know you can make something beautiful about it we can stop planting wickedness with his help we can yeah. stop re reaping evil when we stop planting wickedness and then we don't have to eat the fruit of deception where we can battle deception with truth and we can sow righteousness we can reap unfailing love or mercy we can break up the unfall the fallowed ground the unplowed ground we can break up the hard ground that seeds can't be planted in that's really what that means and that's what we're called to do as disciples we're called to plant seeds but you can't throw seeds on concrete and expect them to pop up well you can in south carolina because we got all them cracks <laughs> but regular time you need tilled soil and so our jobs as planters and sowers and reapers is to go till the soil and then plant the seeds and then water them and and we all have different parts in that 
but we've got to do it in ourselves first. Yeah. We've got to have seeds of righteousness growing in us and we've got to have fruit because without fruit, you don't have seeds to plant. Yeah. And so it's super important when you look at the whole metaphor that Jesus has laid out for us about the reaping and the sowing and the planting and the fruit. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful because you see how he's designed us to be tilled first, to be planted in to be watered, to grow fruit, the fruits of the spirit. And after you grow fruit, the fruit falls off. Other people can enjoy it for nourishment. And then those seeds get planted other places. And that is a beautiful metaphor of what it looks like to walk in faith every single day. Sorry, I don't know why I yelled walk so loud. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And just like you're talking, this book I was reading, um, it talks about the the different types of soils that he talks about in the parable. Yeah. Um, and he, he talks about how it's so important that you show people their heart condition, yeah. because if you don't work on the heart condition, then the word it will fall in thorny soil or fall in hard soil. And it's just, you're wasting your time basically. Right. And not that getting the gospel across is not wasting your time, but right. if it's going to ears that aren't listening, then what's the point? Right, yes, because everybody's ears are hearing. It goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, but not everybody's listening Mm -hmm. and their hearts may not be ready to receive. Or maybe, you know, if you're not operating in the spirit, you could say something wrong or out of line and that could be just offensive or taken the wrong way. Or, for example, I was allowed to minister to somebody today over Facebook, which was incredible. I didn't think that's where that conversation was going, but that's where Jesus took it. And if I had shared with him the gospel, he wouldn't have received it because he didn't need to hear the gospel. He knew the gospel. He needed to hear how God could help him right now in the situation he was in. And I was uniquely equipped to share that with him because I had been in that situation. And so I just poured my heart out and I said, I snapped my friends and I was like, y'all pray for me. Um, I'm telling somebody about Jesus and you know they immediately went into praying for me and I was allowed and given the words to say by father to tell him exactly what he needed to hear and like I don't know how he received that because it was a direct message on Facebook you know (laughs) or a push private message whatever it's called um so I don't know really how he received that but Christ does and I did my job I threw the water or the seed or whichever one you know, and so it's important that we're we're spirit led in everything that we do, because a lot of people know the gospel, and it, they don't need a, a a reutterance of that. They don't need you to repeat something that somebody's already told them. They need you to make it personal, and that's what I want to do on this show is make everything personal to me. I want to be vulnerable. I want you to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. so that our listeners know that God is still alive and well, and He's still moving and sowing and reaping and all that fun stuff yeah okay so where are we okay yeah so we're gonna move do you have anything before Hosea 11 9 okay so we're gonna move to Hosea 11 9 and 10 uh will you read that one for me certainly I will not execute the fierceness of my anger I will not again destroy Ephraim for I am God and not man the holy one in our in your midst and I will not come with terror They shall walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, then his sons shall come trembling from the west. Okay, great. And the verse before that, so 8, says my heart, well, I'm going to start in the middle. My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. It also says my heart is turned within me. My heart is repenting. So that's God talking to Israel saying how much he loves them, that he's not going to do what he said he would, but they have to repent. Mm -hmm. Um, God is merciful, people, but not that... He wouldn't be here if he wasn't merciful. Right, right. He'd all be Sodom and Gomorrah back there. (laughs) But here's the thing. He wants a people that love him, just like us. We don't want to be in a room full of people that think we're ugly or that our voice sounds terrible or we're this or that or we don't want to be in a room where we're not accepted people say that all the time don't be in a room where you're tolerated so if we don't want that don't we think god doesn't want a people surrounding him that don't absolutely adore him Mm -hmm. because he's so perfect and he's given us every good gift and he's given he gives us breath y'all he gives us breath so why would he want people that didn't want him 
Papa because he loves us so much. He is merciful, and so we don't take advantage of his mercy. We don't use grace as this excuse to live our lives however we please, because that's not pleasing to God. And when you truly love someone, you will not do anything to hurt them. And I know, because I truly love a lot of people, and I, I would never hurt them intentionally. I would never hurt anyone intentionally because I love everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't always been like that. The love of God really had to work on me. But why, if we love God, why would we do something against him? Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And I love him. So it's simple. I'm going to keep his commandments. And when I struggle with that, there's grace for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to just disregard all of his commandments and be like, oh, there's grace and mercy for that. Because there's coming a day where Jesus is coming back and grace and mercy, bloop, it's going to be gone. If you don't know him, you don't love him, you're out. Yeah. And we're going to stand it and give an account for everything. And if we're under the blood of Jesus, we don't give an account like the sinner's who aren't under the blood give an account because our sins have been atoned for. We yeah. still give an account for all the words we spoke and what we did in the kingdom and what we didn't do in the kingdom, but we don't give an account for our sins. I don't want to give an account for my sins and things was awful. <laughs> I don't ever want to even think about them again, but I'm reminded of them not to discourage me, but to encourage other people that, hey, it doesn't matter the life you're living. Christ died so that you could live a better one, so that you could be happy and have an abundant life. So why would we take advantage of that? Yeah. Mm. It's a good <laughs> scripture because this is where we see the heart of God really turning towards his children. And all of chapter 11, I know we've talked about the... Um, husband and wife analogy but chapter 11 gives you this good analogy of a father and a son and i love it because it's so beautiful it shows the vastness and the different ways that god loves us yeah. okay anything else okay okay all right we are moving to hosea 12 6 okay but you must return to your God, maintain love and justice, and wait for your God always. In the King James Version, it says continually. Okay, that's pretty clear. But I felt like we needed to read it and talk about it because that's what this whole book is about. That's what this whole book, the whole Bible is about, is returning to the Lord, maintaining love and justice, waiting for Him continually, always. Um, in my Bible, I've got little quotes from people, and it says, God's love is so delightful, any other pleasure seems dismal in comparison with it. And that has been so true in my life. Like, everything else just fades away when I think about God and Jesus and their goodness and their glory and the way that they love me and the love that I have for them. Everything else just like, well... None of it matters. Like Seth and I were talking before the show about how ready we are to go to heaven. And <laughs> we're really young people. Like I'm 23 and Seth, you're 20, right? 19. 19. He's a baby. <laughs> okay, guys. So the fact that we're sitting here and, and we're like, yep, ready to go to heaven. Nothing here is holding us here is just a testimony to how good the father is. Like, yeah, we... I want to get married and I'm sure Seth has plans of his own, but those plans pale in comparison to being in the presence of the King. Yeah. And just like we talked about, and just like Paul said, the only reason we're here is mm -hmm. because we have a purpose and we have a plan Right. and God has still got to use us. That's right. It's, it's better for y'all that we're here, <laughs> but it would be, it would be better for us to be with God and every time I read that, when Paul wrote that, I'm like, yes, that's me. Take me now, Lord. But if you need me, I'll stay here. Not my will, but your will. Hallelujah. Okay. You have anything? Okay. So we're going to skip to chapter 13. Oh, gosh, it's 923. Okay, we're going to skip to chapter 13, 4 through 6. 
But I have been the Lord your God ever since you came out of Egypt. You shall know or acknowledge no God but me, no Savior except me. I care for you in the I cared for you in the wilderness, in the land of burning heat. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. Pride pride before a haughty fall. Is that what that saying says? Yes. We're not to be prideful at all. Like God's blessings are not a direct uh, picture of his favor upon us Mm -hmm. or how good we are or we don't deserve anything. And we need to get that right out the gate. We do not deserve anything but death, hell, and the grave. It is by grace we are saved because he gives to both the righteous and the unrighteous. Obviously, have you seen Hollywood? But... (laughs) The thing is, we're not to get puffed up. Love is not puffed up. We don't want to be like this. He's our Lord and our Savior. We don't need to get prideful. And I used to be very prideful. So that means a lot coming from me. Anything to add? And just like you said, pride has always been a thing that I may not have shown it, but in my (laughs) heart, I've had a very prideful heart in the past. Yeah, me too. And that's one of those things that I've been really dealing with myself over the past week. I've been going through situations and thinking about was I prideful is there a time to like that I was not a good witness for our father was there a time that I did not show the father's love and I put myself above these other people or I was judgmental or anything that put someone else lower than me right and I mean there is nothing lower than me other than the fact that I am made righteous in the father's eyes that's right i I like to remind myself i am but ashes and so is everyone else and god makes us new creations but we have to be grounded in the fact that without him we are nothing and everything that we have and everything that we are is all because of him there's no reason to be prideful whatsoever yeah okay so we're going to read 13 9 You are destroyed, Israel. In the King James Version, it says, You have destroyed yourself, Israel, because you are against me, against your helper. And I love that because we do that. We destroy ourselves when we decide that we're not for God all the way. When we're on the fence or on the left side of the fence, when we're not for God all the way, we destroy ourselves. And I've been there so many times. Uh, whether it was just thoughts that I had that I wasn't thinking on the right things like the Bible tells us to or relationships I've been in. I've really destroyed myself. Praise God for grace because now I'm here and I'm trying not to destroy myself. (laughs) We're really hitting all the revelations. Um, (laughs) And another thing I was doing with it was compromise and looking at my life and seeing even if that sin that I was okay with even if i it i wasn't allowing like it didn't come to pass and i didn't follow through with it just the fact that in my mind i was okay with it for a split second yes it's all about it just it breaks me down i'm like i am so little and i need so much grace because i was even comfortable with that sin being in my life right right Okay, so now we're at chapter 14. We just got two verses left. So 14.1, return Israel to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. And we all need to be reminded that um, for the wages of sin is death. And for all of us, what is it, Romans something? For all have fallen short of the glory of God. We need to remember that our our sin is our downfall. We don't have anyone to blame. Like, yeah, the devil seeks. He's roaming about like a roaring lion, seeking who he can destroy and devour. But ultimately, you have no one to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. And so we need to take that harsh look at ourselves, and then come to God. We need to return to the Lord. Okay, my favorite verse is 14, 9. It's the last one. The ways, oh, who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. The King James Version says, but the transgressors fall in them. And I love that 
because it shows us that we could either walk righteously Mm -hmm. or we can stumble our way through life. And I don't want to stumble through life. It's not fun. No, it's it's miserable. I've done it before. I don't even want to be in the permissive will of God. I want to be in the perfect will of God all the time. I want to ask him, you know, what am I going to eat for breakfast? I want to look for him in the mundane, in the small things, because he is so incredible and he wants to be a part of my life that much. What I've really been working on is my first thought being about God being towards God, being to God, because in the morning time, you know, I've used the excuse for a long time that I'm not a morning person, but that's no excuse. I need my first thought to be about God. Mm -hmm. My first 15 minutes, my first 30, my first hour, my all day. I want it to be about God, but that starts with that first second that your eyes pop open. Yes. Yeah. And that's every morning I wake up and I'm like, Lord, how do I get to see you today? Yeah. Where are you going to show me you today? And so right. that, that kind of gets my mind going and in the in the direction of looking for the Lord constantly because he's everywhere. Yeah. And because we are so busy, we miss him. And so I've been really working on that too, is just not being so busy and not being caught up in the things around me. Is, and just, like you said, paying attention to the little things and just just watching and looking for God. Right. And and when we seek him with our whole heart, we find him. So Seth and I don't just wake up in the morning and like, okay, God, where are you? <laughs> no. When we seek him, we find him because we seek him with our whole heart. And it's beautiful when we when we get that, you know? I'm so thankful that we finally got through Hosea. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying we won't ever come back, but we must remember what we've learned. Hosea showed us that God sustained. Hosea showed us the condition of our hearts, the human condition, and how we desperately need our Savior, and what that looks like biblically, what a marriage looks like, what our salvation looks like. It showed us that we need to come back to God every single day. Repentance is so important for us. And so I'll encourage you in all those things. I thank you all for listening. I'm going to give a few shout outs. Um, Miss Iris, Deidre, everybody watching Catherine. Hello, everybody. Okay. I can't shout you all out because we've got like no seconds left, (laughs) Um, but we're going to get better about that. Thank you guys for watching us and listening to us. I pray that you have a blessed weekend and we will be back here next week.